everybody. I'm Kevin Lang, Combine Product Specialist with Lang Diesel, and today I would like to go through the EIP monitor in your Gleaner Combine. This monitor was used in 2003 on the R5 series, all the way up through the S8 series in 2015 and 2016. So on your monitor here, uh, you've got a picture of a combine with a bunch of different buttons that can help you view different pieces of data about your machine. So the first one would be rotor speed. You can view it on this little screen here. You have concave clearance. You have distribution auger speed. You have your fan choke setting. You have your feeder house speed. You have in-cab temperature as well as outside air temperature. You have your clean grain elevator speed, your tailings elevator speed. You have your chopper speed, your shoe shake speed, your chaff spreader or your straw spreader speed, as well as your chaffer and sieve settings. The Hit the button the first time and it'll light up the top button will be your chaffer. You hit it again, it'll go to the lower right corner and that will be your sieve setting. As well as different Button, buttons to view for your header. You've got real speed, your cut height, you've got a button for your moisture, for your moisture sensor, um, as well as some different settings for uh, engine hours um, and separator hours. Um, over here you have some different settings for uh, your acre counter, uh, if you would use that on this monitor. We can go into the configuration and setup of that here in a minute. And then in your top right corner, you've got most of your alarms uh, for oil pressure, uh, battery voltage, um, fuel, engine RPM, water temperature. Um, so that's kind of the main readout on those screens. So basically you hit a button and it'll read out the value on that, on that little display screen. Um, there's also a couple indicator warning light, lights. Uh, there would be one for your rock trap door. There's one for your bin being full. And there's also one for your auger being swung out and one for when you're unloading augers on. So kind of an easy place uh, to just look up overhead and you can see a lot of the, the functions you need for your, for your machine. Um, I want to go into the calibrations. Uh, so coming up on wheat harvest or harvest of any sort, uh, it's always good to go in and, and go through the settings of your machine and do some calibrations. So the first thing you'll do is go into setup. If you just hit setup one time real quick, you'll go into uh, setup one. The first thing that pops up is backlight. So that would be kind of your backlight setting on your on your, uh, on your your monitor and your screen. Uh, you know, if it gets dark at night and you want to tweak that a little bit so it doesn't hurt your eyes, you can adjust it there. So here is your up arrow to change, uh, change things up, your down arrow to change it down. Um, setup will exit you back out of the menu. Um, and then OK will take you to the, next, uh, to the next option. So we'll leave that one where it is. We'll hit OK. The next one is your moisture calibration. So if you don't have a, a C2000 or a C2100 monitor, this is where you would do your moisture calibration. And this is just a simple offset. So if you are reading 14 moisture on your, um, on your monitor, you get a ticket back from the elevator and it's saying 13, you just come in here and do a minus 1% as an offset. We'll go on to the next one, your alarm percentage. This is gonna be the, the amount where your moisture alarm goes off. Um, this one right now is set at 40.3%. Um, that is set high so that um, if you do have the C2000 or C2100 monitor, you don't ever have to worry about this, uh, this setting or this alarm going off. <clears throat> uh, display. This one gives you a couple different options to choose from on your A-post. Um, you can view your engine RPM, your, um, as well as your rotor RPM, uh, ground speed, a couple different things you can change change from. Uh, the next setting is your width, so this is where you can set your, your header width. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you can do your use your acre counter uh, through this monitor, and so that's where you would set your header width to count acres accurately. Uh, cutoff, that would be your cutoff height, um, so that's going to be where it starts counting acre cuttage, or cutting. So if you were, if you're running through the field and you set your cutoff height at 12 inches, and anything below that it'll track as as counting acres harvested. If your header set above that, like for a headland turn, it will stop counting acres. And for that, you would actually you'd actually set your, your feeder house or your header where you want, and then hit the set button uh, to set that height. Uh, the next setting we have is real diameter. So this would be for picking basically a 
a bat reel versus a pickup reel. Um, right now this one is set on 44 inches, which would typically be a pickup reel. Uh, the other setting would be 38.3 for a, for a bat reel. It's just going to affect how your auto reel speed settings work. Uh, the next setting is reel control. You have two options. You've got aggressive and normal. Um, that's just kind of going to be an operator feel. You can play back and forth between the two and, and see what works for your auto reel control. Uh, the next one we have is tire radius. Um, what that really is going to do is if, is going to calibrate your ground speed on your A-post. Um, so should probably be, be set, but if you do notice your, your ground speed not uh, reading accurately on your A-post, <coughs> then you can, uh, you can adjust your tire radius to, to work accurately. Uh, the next thing is units, uh, English or metric units. Um, and that takes us back around uh, to the beginning. Um, so the important thing is if you change a setting that you always hit OK to go to the next one to accept that value. And then when you're all done, you just hit set up again to exit. There's also a setup two. If you hold the button for three seconds, you'll see a beep to set up two. Um, that'll take you into some, some more settings that are probably a little deeper in the machine, maybe the once a year settings, whereas setup one is, is some things you might change on a daily basis. The first thing that pops up is your EIP software. Um, so if you have a, an issue and a technician asks you what software version you're running, you can come in and look that up. Uh, model, um, this one is an S77. That just kind of changes some of the configurations in the monitor. The next one is concave. So this is where you do your calibrations. Um, most of the, or all of, of the settings in the Gleaner are done with electric actuators. So these calibrations calibrate the full range of that actuator um, for your settings so that when you set, let's say, your fan choke on 7, that really is reading 7. So you'll see it flashes back and forth. It says up arrow when you're at max and down arrow when you're at minimum. So you would just come into your right-hand console and you would go to your concave switch and you would hold up on it until you open your concave all the way up. Now this is always good to do with the machine off so you can hear the actuator or actually have somebody helping you out with this, standing uh, back behind the machine so they can tell you when your concave's all the way open or closed. So you'd run it all the way open, you'd hit the up arrow, and then you'd go back and run your concave all the way closed and hit the down arrow. And then you hit OK to go on to the next, um, next item. So there's several different settings uh, in here that, that follow that same process. The next one would be airflow. That would be the same process for your fan choke. The next one is sieve chaffer. Now this is a yes or no question. What that means is um, starting in 2009, the electric sieve and chaffer adjust was an option. So that's basically telling the machine, yes, I do have electric sieve and chaffer adjust. The next step you'll go to would then be the chaffer calibration. Same process again, you go over into your right hand console, run your chaffer all the way open, press the up arrow, all the way closed, run the down arrow. Now on the chaffer and sieve, it's always very important to make sure they're very clean before you do this calibration process. That way you make sure it's getting all the way open and all the way closed. The next one would be the sieve cal calibration to follow the same process. And the next one would be height. So this is calibrating the full range of motion for your feeder house to set your cut height accurately. So it's best to do this with the header on the machine on flat level ground and follow the same process. Put the header all the way down on the ground, push the down arrow, Lift the header all the way up and press the up arrow. Uh, the next one's the engine calibration. This is actually going to be where you set your low speed alarm for your engine. Uh, typically this is set at 2000 RPM, but um, if you push a little bit harder and, and run your machine full, maybe you want to bump that down to 1950 or something like that uh, so your alarm's not going off quite as much. Uh, next would be moisture. The Once again, kind of like the the electric sieve and chaffer, this is saying yes, this combine has a moisture monitor. Uh, the next one is spreader. Uh, this is asking what type of drive. On the older machines, you could have a belt drive or a hydraulic drive. So once again, we're just telling the machine we have a hydraulic drive. Uh, and then it's basically stating uh, the next one it would be a yes or no that it has a Sisu engine. And that takes us back around to the beginning. So once again, we hit set up to exit. So those are some of the basic functions of the EIP monitor. Um, like I said, it's a great heads-up display to get you most of your uh, machine information, but don't forget when you're pulling out of your, mach your machine out of the shed uh, before harvest to run through these calibrations. Uh, 
especially your chaffer and sieve if you would if you would happen to change to a corn chaffer um, or just once a year it's always good to do that to make sure your calibrations are accurate that way when you're making machine adjustments through the field they're they're adjusting accurately so appreciate you joining us today and wish you good luck on your harvest Fan, open, closed. This turns on and off your chaff spreader. Sieve, bottom sieve, open, closed. Chaffer, open, closed. This is your auto steer and gauge button. This is your cutter bar pressure for Dynaflex header. This is your switch to fold up your ladder. And this is a multifunction switch for a Dynaflex header to switch from real 4 aft to header pitch.